Name me a more recognizable, distinctive voice than Wallace Shawn. Go on, I'm waiting. Inconceivable! How about The Princess Bride? Clueless, The Incredibles, the Toy Story movies. My Dinner with Andre, which he wrote and also starred in as himself. Wallace Shawn has been playing screen characters for more than four decades, has acted in dozens of films, and has also notably branched out into voice acting. He also has a long track record of acting in the theater and has co-written and written many screenplays as well as stage plays. He hails from a Jewish family, and you may be surprised to learn that they actually immigrated from Poland to North America fairly early for this type of family in the 1870s or maybe even a little earlier. And in talking about Wallace Shawn's ancestors, we're going to be telling the story along the way of one of my favorite names that I've ever come across on this channel, and that is somebody named Jackknife Ben. Now, if you want to find out who Jackknife Ben is, stay tuned because we're going to talk about him. I'm Yona Paley, and I believe genealogy is fun. Today, we're going to be talking about the family of Wallace Michael Shawn, one of the greatest character actors of all time. He was born in 1943 to William Leonard Shawn and Cecile Lyon. William was the youngest of five siblings and had a successful career himself as the editor of the New Yorker magazine for more than 35 years. Now believe it or not, he was not born with the last name Shawn. He changed it from Chon, which doesn't sound that different from Shawn, but he was actually the only one of his siblings to change the last name, probably to fit into the corporate world of the publishing business. Now, even though he was the youngest of his siblings, his father, Benjamin John, was the oldest of nine siblings. In the early 1900s, Ben started a business selling knives, and he didn't have a storefront, so what he did was he got an old apple barrel, and he would just stick jackknives in it and basically stand on the side of the road. People would pass by, and that was how he marketed his business. And eventually somebody gave him the moniker Jackknife Ben, and it just stuck with him. It eventually became what he became known as, and he grew this into a successful cutlery business, and even got his name and photo printed in local newspapers. It took a while to figure out where Jackknife Ben was born, because some of his records said New York, others said Poland or Russia, and yet others said Canada. And the same went for some of his siblings. And I noticed that Canada kept popping up over and over again, even though the family had lived in Chicago since at least the 1890s. So I did some digging, and what I found is the trajectory of the family, which goes something like this. Before I begin, I just want to highlight a rule of thumb that I use, which has proven to be very helpful for me in genealogy. And it's just a rule of thumb, it's not accurate 100% of the time, but I found that it helps me unlock mysteries at a much better hit rate. And what that is, is that the older the record is, usually the more accurate it is when talking about dates of birth and locations. And the reason for this is because the further and further away from an event that people get, the more memories tend to fade, and if people didn't record things down properly in the first place, they can often slip away. So what I managed to find is this incredible 1881 Toronto census, which shows the entire Chon family living in Toronto. There are the parents, William and Elizabeth Chon, along with their children, starting with the oldest, Ben. And from unlocking this document, along with a bunch of tax records from Toronto, and birth records of some of his siblings who died in infancy, it looks like the Chons came to Canada around the early 1870s, or maybe slightly earlier, and they stayed there until around 1889. And then in 1889 or 1890, 
that is when they went across the border. You can tell this because the tax records for Toronto end in 1889. And then William shows up in a voting registration document in 1890 in Chicago. So what I'm pretty sure happened is that they moved to Canada, stayed there for a long time, then moved to Chicago. But then on a lot of, of the earlier records for the family, they said stuff like, oh, some of our kids were born in New York. When in reality, the first few were born in Poland and then the rest of them were born in Toronto. There is one city that kept cropping up anytime I saw a reference to them being born in Poland or Russia, and that is Warsaw. So it seems very clear that the Chons did come from either in or near the largest city in Poland, and I was not able to find any records locally in Europe for the family, but there's just so many records in both Canada and the US that list Warsaw that I'm pretty confident in that being the place or region. Though I was able to find the gravestone of William and Elizabeth Chon, which gives us their Hebrew names or their Yiddish names, which were Moshe Leib Chon and Esther Leah Singer. And the Singer surname comes from a lot of documents like marriages and de the death of Elizabeth. But Moshe Leib being changed to William is not something that you would have necessarily guessed. A lot of times William is changed from Wolf or some other W starting sounding name. Uh, but in this case, according to the headstone, his name was Moshe Leib Chon. Needless to say, the family came to North America about a decade earlier than is common among people from that part of the world. Most of the big wave of Jewish immigration happened between the 1880s and 1920s. So for someone to come over in the 1870s or maybe even a little earlier, it's not unheard of, but it's definitely in the less common category for when people immigrated to North America. So that is kind of interesting and it also makes things a little bit more tricky in terms of finding immigration records because the further back you go, the less official moving from place to place was. People would just kind of show up the ship manifests, even if you do find them, they don't have a lot of information. And there actually aren't even any border crossing records available for that time period uh, from 1890 or so when they would have crossed over into the United States. So anyways, that is the trajectory of the Chon family, Wallace Shawn's direct paternal line. What are your thoughts on the family? Let me know in the comments section and also please be sure to follow me on social media. I've included a link to my Instagram and my Twitter in the description box below. So please follow me on social media. And that wraps up this episode. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. As always, I'm looking forward to bringing you more videos as well as tips and tricks that you can use in your own genealogy research. So thank you so much for watching and I'll get you next time.